What's up, Sim Racers? This is Larry at TJR Sim here, and today we're going to go over ACC with the VR settings using my HP Reverb G2. I know y'all were interested in this, and uh, right off the bat, I have some good news and I have some bad news. The good news is it's playable. The, the bad news is it's not as playable as, say, AMS2 or um, Project Cars 2, for that matter. Uh, it's not as optimized as those two particular games are uh, for VR. But and you, you do need a pretty briefy, beefy graphics card. You have a next-gen headset, you're gonna need a next-gen GPU. Um, now this particular game uses uh, CPU almost as much as it uses the GPU. Uh, and you'll, you'll notice if you use something like uh, FPS VR, uh, you'll notice that you can actually crank some settings up pretty high on, on the level and get up into the 90% of your GPU usage and around 50% of your CPU usage and still run, you know, still cranking the settings up pretty high and running good. The downside is, is you end up chasing your tail a little bit because you never can get rid of completely the stutters. You never get that smoothness. Sometimes in some parts of the track, say like Silverstone, that's not so busy. You can get some smooth transitions of the cars coming in front of you and it not like looking jittery going by you. Uh, and then when you're up beside the car and stuff, uh, it gets looking smooth, pretty smooth, you know, but as they start getting further away, they look like they're a little bit jittery and stuff. So uh, don't expect smooth gameplay, really any of the settings that you use here. You can put everything on low and the, uh, the uh, super sampling down to 50% and it's still gonna, it's just gonna look bad and uh, it's still gonna be jittery looking. So I went ahead and try to optimize as far as performance to looking good and playable uh, for using something like a 2080 Ti. Now if you're using a 3080 or 3090, I know this is still pretty taxing for you as well. So that ought to tell you something if you're running something lower than that. Now, let's just jump into the actual settings real quick. Now on the video settings here, when we go to ACC, I don't know why this glitches and say 100%, but when I click on it, it's like there's two settings here. There we go, 70% is what I'm at. So uh, as you can see here, it's 2656 by 2592, 70%. It's a nice little sweet spot. It takes out the blurriness in the, in the background. Uh, the edges of the car looks real smooth. By far, just if you have triple monitors, I would play this on triples all day long compared to VR with a 2080 Ti because even with triples, you're running 60, 70 FPS, but everything just looks so much better. As far as being immersion though, way better with the VR. And these settings kind of get you, you know, looking pretty dang good actually in VR. It's probably my favorite in, in nighttime driving with this headset with these settings because, like I said, it kind of blurs out the backgrounds of where there would be issues. Anyway, I digress. So 70% is a good one. If you're struggling for frame rates, if you have something less than 2080 Ti, if you have a 2080 Supra, you should be actually pretty good with that too. Uh, but 20, what, 60s or whatever. Um, or even the 10 series, like 1080 cars, 1080 Ti's, uh, rather, you're gonna be in at 50%. Just forget about it, set it there, and get on with it. Now, you could go ahead and, and enable. I have motion smooth and enabled. You can actually force it always on, and which will lock you in at 45 FPS. Uh, since I'm usually running with these particular settings close to 60 FPS, uh, then you know, I didn't really need to run that on there. So I left it off. All right, so let's get on to the actual settings in there. Remember 70% and there you are. All right, let's go into the settings and I'll show the video at the end of it. You can see what it's going through, but I mean, you can even see here it's running 33 to 50 FPS just on this monitor, so. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's see, V-Sync of course disabled, frame limit, this is, I have a 144 Hertz monitor, but you can run this on down to 90 uh, when you're in your VR headset. R92, I usually like to add a little bit buffer, but here are my settings here. Uh, resolution scale at 100, view distance at high, and like I said, you do use um, uh, different, um, you know, since you're utilizing your CPU and your GPU, you'll notice you actually be able to turn some things up uh, a little bit more and get away with it. Like I said, it still looks a little blurry, a little bit shimmery looking as the cars are going by you in some cases. Some cases they look really smooth. At nighttime, it actually looks pretty dang good um, as good as I, I could get it at a lot of testing but uh, view distance didn't seem taxing at all uh, just picks up a little bit few more markers out there in the distance uh, I run shadows on high 
if you didn't know, shadows on low, um, I mean, they do the job that has some shadowing, but it doesn't, uh, the cars look like they're floating on the track, uh, even when they're just sitting there on the track. Uh, so you bump it up to medium and then it adds some more better shadowing on the track. Of course, it depends on where your sun's at, right? But, um, and, you know, how, how the sun's shading on the track. But medium looks a little bit better, but when they're in motion, depending on where you're coming across on the track, uh, medium still doesn't cut it. High is really the best one, obviously. But uh, it, it, you, feel, you, you break immersion a lot less when you leave it on high. So I leave it on high. Shadow distance is low, but like I said, if you're having frame frame drops and stuff, this is taxing on your GPU. Bump it down to low. Uh, and see anti-aliasing, you can max that out to high. Um, well, I think Epic's the max, but I just run high. You don't really need anything in Epic and VR. Uh, anti-aliasing type KTAA is what I run. It actually gets a few more frames if you run it in Portal, uh, is what I notice with with this headset, but it's too much shimmering going on, especially as the cars, because it gets a lot of this uh, shimmering off your mirrors and stuff when you're in the car, and you see it off the edges of the other cars when you're on track, and that just adds to a lot of immersion being broke, broken away. It just looks horrible. So, um, But anyway, KTAA is what you want to use. Uh, effects high, that's just like your sparks off the track, like at nighttime and stuff, so it's not taxing at all. Uh, you can crank down on, on a post processing. That one's very taxing. Uh, I run it on low. It looks a little bit better on medium. High is not even necessary. Um, it almost adds a nice shade to the track and the cars and, and the stands gets a little bit better shade to them. But uh, the screen's so bright, um, it looks fine on on low to me. I actually was running shadows on low and then turning pro post processing up on medium and I was digging that pretty good uh, however you still get the floaty cars so you, you either got to have one or the other between those two in this game you can't have both uh, unless you're running a 30 series car then I don't know because I don't have one to test but uh, I could imagine you could at least run this at medium with a 30 series but um, anyway I run the, I sacrifice this for low and run my shadows on high so they don't look like my cars are floating. If you're running nighttime though, I mean you're dropping some frames, you can drop your shadows down as well. Uh, foliage, it's trees. It looks great. I love trees, but uh, you're driving so fast it doesn't matter. So run it down the low. Textures on high. You can do that all day. Uh, mirror view distance. So mirrors are very very taxing in this game, and so if you're running. A mirror or if you're running a rear view camera system in your car depending on what car you have that's pretty taxing as well so if you I noticed I would jump another 10 frames when I went from 70 uh, down to to 30 and then I'd gain a little five more frames once I went down to 20 in, in some situations now if you're sitting on the starting line it doesn't matter there's so much so many objects and so many cars around you anyway uh, that you know you're gonna be in the 50s or sometimes 40s uh, setting at the starting line anyway so most of the time in the 40s you set that starting line until you start moving uh but 20 20 meters is pretty good 30 is a little bit better as far as uh seeing how far but i when you're racing 20 meter, meters they still don't show up in that little uh little cheat box you have up on the screen if you turn it on where it tells you where the position of the cars are from you uh it was a mod for ac but uh, it is included in acc uh, but anyway, 20 meters is about right. Uh, when they're 20 meters away from you, that's really when you need to see them. Otherwise, you don't need to see them, um, in my opinion. Mirror quality on low, um, that's very taxing as well. You, if you turn this off, then, of course, you have no mirrors. If you, if you can run with no mirrors, then you're going to get some more frames. But uh, it, it really breaks immersions without mirrors in VR. So I run them on low. Uh, frame rate, auto. Now mirror resolution, now that's a pretty good one there. Uh, it's not very taxing actually uh, to run this and you'll naturally will want to run this on low. However, they look so dang pixelated in your mirror that it just, it, it kills it for me because the rest of your game looks really nice in VR and then you look in your mirror and it's like, ugh, it looks like I'm I'm playing uh, Roblox or, or uh, what, Minecraft, like I'm playing Minecraft or something, right? So uh, I run them up to, uh, what do I have, medium? Oh, high. I run them at the high, and uh, that looks good actually at high. Medium's, yeah, doesn't 
it doesn't really matter. Medium looks good. Medium would be the less, least I would run. Uh, but high, of course, rounds off the edges, makes the cars look really good uh, in your rear view mirrors. And it's like I said, I didn't really drop any frames. I mean, I may have dropped a few here and there, but it wasn't enough to break immersion. And uh, yeah, it's, it's just not worth it uh, to me. But anyway, opponents, visibility, all. Um, you can actually run this down to a lot lower to where you're only seeing, uh, let's say 10 opponents. If you're running something with like, like a high count of cars on track. Uh, however, when you're running your mirror distance at 20, you're not going to see them behind you. Uh, and then sometimes when you're running your opponent visibility at 10, if you're at spa and they're going up the hill, all of a sudden they disappear because you only got 10 cars, including cars behind you and cars in front of you, 10 period available to see between your mirrors and what you can see out the front windshield. So I just leave it on all and it didn't really seem to hurt too bad. Um, anyway, the rest of it, VR density, 100%. And uh, the re uh, virtual to real scale, 100%. Materials on medium, that's as low as you can go. Temporal upsampling, disabled. Bloom, off. Uh, you can run it on low. Wasn't bad with it. I just turned it off because you still seem like you have plenty of bloom even at nighttime. As far as the, uh, you know, the uh, lights shining across the track when you're racing on night. When you turn the bloom quality up, they expand out further, which then eats up a lot more. GPU resources like that. So I just leave them off and they still shine appropriately. It looks looks fine. Uh, fog's a big killer. Uh, so turn that off. Uh, see foliage, uh, the load quality as far as how, how it loads up. Uh, very low. Uh, it, I mean, it's bushes, right? So uh, car load quality, 100%. I run it 100%. I used to run this, what was it? I think around 50% or 45, something like that. But there's a certain point to where, when you're looking at the back of the car in front of you, that it starts cutting out uh, sections, especially when they got you know your, your your rear dam of your car and stuff in front of you, and all of a sudden it kind of cuts out some of it. It breaks immersion a lot. Uh, it does help with FPS though to have it lower. However, it's breaking immersion so much, and as far as the overall quality of it uh, that I'm trying to achieve, I could lower super sampling, you know. Uh, 5% and offset what this is. So I run this at 100%, really about, I think it was 75%. You pretty much get everything on your car that you wanna see. Uh, so that's good there. Uh, I didn't really notice the difference between 75 and 100%. Why I run it at 100%? I don't know, it's just maxed out. <laughs> uh, but it didn't matter um, as far as between those two ranges. Probably on certain tracks, or certain daylights and stuff, you would notice the difference, but from the testing I was doing, nah. H load, uh, that's enabled. Uh, advanced uh, filter and enable, motion blur off, saturation 100, white balance neutral, sharpness 80, and the rest of it's just up to you. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> let's see, where was one of them I was going to comment about? Let me see. H load enabled, uh, that is your. Yeah, enabling this increases your performance. You can disable this one. That's what I want to talk about, H-Load. You can turn it off and disable it, and that means you'll pick up your, your pit objects. Well, my ACC just closed off, but... Uh, sorry, there we go. All right, ACC just locked up and closed out, but we can continue on. But with H-Load, uh, if you, turn, if you en enable it, it'll take some of the features that are further away from you and make them more blocky and stuff. So if you want a little bit more immersion, you can disable H load at the cost of some FPS. How much? Don't know. Really depends on what track you're on, uh, on there. But I just leave it enabled and run with it. So those are the settings. I'm gonna launch the actual game or, or some gameplay of it going uh, afterwards. It's hot in this room, so um, with this computer running. But anyway, I'm gonna launch the rest of the game, and I hope these settings are helpful for you. Again, like what I what I was saying is I'm trying to optimize as far as the best of what it would look good and be playable at the same time by no means can you was i able to get the smoothest play like i would in ams2 uh it just just couldn't happen with the 2080 ti uh, with the settings even if you turn everything off on low so i just decided to optimize it for it to look the best get the most prettiness out of it 
uh, with the most immersion out of it and smooth the gameplay at the same time. So, uh, anyway, hope you enjoyed it. R watch the rest of the clip and uh, leave some comments below. If you got some comments, try to help you out as much as I can. Uh, until next time, oh, have a happy new year. I'm out. on the left. Car on the 
left. Clear on the left. Car on the left. Clear on the left. Car on the left. Clear on the left. Car on the left. Clear on the left. Car on the left. Clear on the left. We are halfway through, not over yet. Well done, mate. This has been your personal best. Car on the left. Clear on the left. Car on the left. Clear on the left. on the left. Clear on the left. Well done, Blade. Fastest lap of the race so far. Clear on the right.
faster step of the race, man. Good job. on the right. Clear on the left. 